On Saturday, Francis Ngannou returns to MMA cage for the first time since January 2022, where he was victorious against Cyril Ghosn in the UFC. We'll see how he does on Saturday. He's coming into this fight after a horrendous personal tragedy with his son passing away. He was knocked out brutally before that for the first time in his career. He hasn't competed in MMA in just under three years, and he has taken on an absolute monster in Henan Ferreira. So while the odds are in his favor to win, all those other factors may close the gap in the betting lines a little bit. It'll be definitely interesting to see what happens in the main event Saturday in the PFL in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Dana White, whose disdain for Nganu is well documented, has been accused in the past of trying to steal some of the shine of Nganu's fights by announcing a bunch of big UFC fights at the same time, and PFL founder Don Davis expects that to be the case again. PFL Super Fight Week, Francis Ngannou makes his highly anticipated return with PFL MMA. So what will Dana White announce to try and steal the spotlight from the biggest fight of 2024? These two guys don't like each other and have been going back and forth through the media and social media. Uh, Don Davis spoke today um, about the Francis fight that they're planning. He says that he spent more on the production of that fight than you spent on Pat the Spear. I'm just curious if... You think that's possible? Don Davis, PFL, says he spent Wait, more right. yeah. than this. I didn't even know who he was till you said it. So what did he say? What, he that said, he spent more? He says he's spending more on the production of the Francis fight than you guys spent on the Spear production. Sounds like a good idea. How mo good for him. Good luck. Hope it all works out. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in addition to Poirier, someone else who proposed some fights for the UFC was Don Davis in the PFL. I'm not sure if you saw that. He proposed uh, Cyberg versus Pacheco and Harrison versus Pena. $2 million each to the winner. The losing company pays all the purses. I know the answer to the question, but I just wanted to hear Listen, I, I, I said it before, man. When you're, when you're losing the kind of money that they're losing and you're in the position that they're in, you just start throwing shit at the wall and you're trying to, you're trying to fight for your life. I mean... Like I said, uh, whenever the hell I said it, I mean, this guy is talking about it. It cannot be fun to be one of their investors. It cannot be fun. Darius has a fight booked. It might be Patty Pimblitz. Darius is one of the guys who's willing to put his ranking on the line. He gives guys ranked below him a shot. Darius is seven, Patty Pimblitz number 15. There were four split decisions over the weekend on the USC card, so 25% of decisions have been split this year in the USC. Sometimes it's understandable, it being a split decision, it's close, it could go either way. But a lot of these rounds are very easy to score, pretty obvious who won the round, no thought or deliberation required. And it's usually only a couple judges who veer off in the wrong direction. Sal D'Amato is one of them, Chris Lee another, and Derek Cleary. Bellator bantamweight champion Patchy Mix training with UFC bantamweight champion Marab Davalashvili. Patchy Mix was supposed to be fighting next month at Bellator Paris, but that card ended up getting cancelled and fighters on that card are going to get rescheduled. I'd like to see Patchy Mix cross over into the UFC. Rob said he could be a UFC champion, and he has nothing left to prove in Bellator, so I'd like to see him go into the UFC as soon as possible because things can change really quickly in MMA. You may be hot shit one day and be cooled off permanently the next. Everyone's one bad fight or one bad injury away from being washed out of their prime, and there's always crazy talent lurking in the shadows about to burst onto the scene, and all of a sudden, the game has passed you by. Hola, mi gente. Oh, you're gonna have a question. I never do this, but I'm having an argument here. <laughs> I'm having an argument here. And the question is I don't even know how to ask it. Do you guys shower after going number two? Or do you just go about your day? Please let me know. Drickus Duplessy enjoying Ilya Tapuria roasting Bilal Muhammad. I guess Bilal and Drickus have had some words in the past. It's sometimes hard to keep track of all these interdivisional beefs. Most of them are pointless in terms of fights actually coming out of them, but they are comical because they sometimes emerge out of nowhere. Like you go into a press conference thinking these guys are going to go at it verbally trying to sell their fights. And then a few seconds in, 125-pound Manal Kopp is about to fight Adesanya after a furious screaming match. 
Conor McGregor also joined in the Bilal Muhammad bashing. To think this bum is now a UFC champion with zero knockdowns on his resume whatsoever is so bad. The UFC's most abysmal zero revenue generating fighter in modern history. As far as revenue generation for this pay-per-view UFC 310 December 7th, it's probably not going to generate too many buys. Neither fighter is a mainstream star that's going to draw in a ton of casual fans to buy the pay-per-view. Good fight though, competitive welterweight contest, two top guys in the division right now. The co-main event is a good one too. Kyos, of course, looking to get that flyweight belt in his first UFC fight. Benoit saying then he says he wants a top 10 opponent next. He's lost two in a row, so probably won't happen. He'll probably fight somebody outside the top 10, maybe outside the rankings. He's as tough as they come, but his skill set at the moment isn't where it needs to be going up against the elite. He definitely has the will, but not the skill at the moment. Maybe it is a good idea for him to take up Moicano's offer to train with him and his team, American Top Team in America, and develop that skill set so next time he gets a top 10 or a top 5 opponent, he gets his hand raised. Hopefully he is all still there, because in some of the fights he loses, he takes a brutal beating. He's just one of these guys who just may be too tough for his own good. In the first round against Moicano, he took 35 brutal ground strikes to the head and kept going. In his fight against Zaleski de Santos in the second round, he took 94 big shots and just kept going on after that. Barely able to stand, walking around like a zombie, but still trucking forward trying to make something happen. Bivol's ex-wife was ecstatic, better BF beat him. I wouldn't wish a piece of S like that on my worst enemy is Darren Till's take on the situation. She made claims of domestic abuse against Bivol and said karma caught up with him in that loss. Barboza's looking like he's moving up a few weight classes in this victory. <laughs> He's coming off a loss to Lerone Murphy in May. Lerone Murphy is fighting later this month. UFC 308 taking on Dan Ige, October 26th. That fight will be on the main card, and it's going to be right before the co-main event between Whitaker and Chemaev. After his victory over Tyra, Brandon Royval got right back to work helping his teammate Luis Giruli get ready for a short notice fight on the Contender Series on Tuesday against Nick Piccinini. Both guys undefeated, Giruli 9-0, Piccinini 7-0, tough wake up for Giruli on short notice. Back and he's trying to talk to Ra. Yeah, little yellow pimple virgin. Yeah, that's there's the queen of the orange order in your kitchen. Yeah, little nerd talking fights. It took you three and a half hours to write that shit. It'd be less for me just to take flight, catch it in the dead of the night and give you a little fright. Daylight, sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. I push one button, you're seeing angels. Now remember who made you, me and Murdy. Your mom's on a hurdy. 